Hello YouTube world, pretend farmer here. Not a real farmer, just pretending. You know, July and August are pretend farmer's least favorite months of the year. It's really hot, it's really humid here in Virginia. Pretend farmer just prefers cooler, more comfortable weather. A lot of people disagree with me on this, but I'm convinced that having chickens is a lot more fun in the winter time than it is in the summer. And here's my reasons for saying that. First of all, the heat seems to amplify smells and odors. You just have a lot more stink that you're gonna notice in the summer months than you are in the winter. Also, in the winter time, the ground freezes over and you can walk right in the run without getting your shoes even muddy. This time of year, you're getting frequent rains. It gets kind of soupy in there, a little squishy. It's a muddy mess a lot of times. You also have the bugs. There's a lot more flies and stuff hanging around your coop that are not only a nuisance to your chickens, but they can be annoying for you as well. And then there's the ones that can actually be kind of hazardous like mites and lice. It doesn't seem like you really have as much problems with mites in the winter time as you do in the warmer months. Chickens do really well when the temperatures are in the 50s or maybe the low 60s. I think that's like their prime temperature that they really prefer. And a lot of the breeds we have here on the pretend farm, like Bucky or Salmon Favreau Rooster, he's more of a cold tolerant breed. He's, he's not a good warm weather, hot climate bird. He doesn't like these upper 80s, low 90 temperatures that we're having right now. So, you know, in the summer, you really gotta take a lot of extra precautions to keep your chickens shaded. You gotta make sure they have good cool water to drink. Uh, there again, a lot of this stuff not an issue in the winter time. And because of a lot of the things that I've already mentioned, like bugs and, you know, smells and that kind of stuff, you have to clean your coop more often in the summertime. You know, you got all these flies in here. In the winter time, we might go about two weeks or so without cleaning our coop. But if I was to go two weeks here in July without cleaning inside the coop, there would be maggots everywhere. It would just be disgusting. It would smell horrible. And sometimes if we get a really hard rain, it'll even blow some rain in the vents that we have up top. And then you've got wet litter, which is not good for the chickens to be in. So we really got to do a lot of extra regular cleanings when the weather's really hot like this. One of my subscribers recently asked me, Pretend Farmer, why do you not do the deep litter method? Well, in this video, Pretend Farmer is going to explain to you why we choose not to do the deep litter method here and why we do clean out our coop on a weekly basis here on the pretend farm. Let's get into it. Now that's a squeaky clean coop. This is what we do weekly here on the pretend farm. And every time I clean out my coop, this is essentially what it looks like when I'm done. Everything's fresh, everything's clean, it smells good. This is how I like to keep it. So before I tell you why we don't do the deep litter method here on the pretend farm, let me explain to you a little bit about what the deep litter method is and how it works. There's a lot more to the deep litter method than just simply cleaning out your coop two or three times a year and then ignoring it. It's way more involved than that. Here on the pretend farm, like I said, we clean our coop out in the summer about once a week, probably about bi-weekly in the winter time. And you know, doing these regular clean outs allows me to take and just shovel out all the bedding. I only pile the bedding in about two inches deep and uh, just a very thin layer of shavings across the floor is what we're doing for bedding here because it's getting changed so regularly. So there's just a little bit of bedding to clean out. I throw down a fresh layer of bedding and my coop stays clean enough throughout the year that pretend farmer can go in and sit down on the floor and talk to the chickens, which I sometimes do. As long as I'm not sitting underneath the roost bar or something, it's probably gonna be pretty clean no matter where I'm at inside my coop. For the deep litter method, you're gonna start out with a clean coop and fresh bedding down. Most people are using pine shavings for this. 
and deep litter requires deep bedding. You're gonna start out with probably about, I don't know, at least five or six inches of shavings. You want a nice deep layer of bedding to start out your deep litter process. As those chickens sit in there and poop, they're gonna naturally kick around a lot of that litter. And since you have such of a deep layer of bedding, a lot of their, their droppings are gonna go down in there. It's gonna start to ferment. And you can kind of help this process by stirring it up or, or turning it a little bit occasionally, but it should never stink. You know, if you're doing deep litter and your coop smells like a really strong ammonia smell or something, it means your, your poop to, to bedding ratio is off. You need to throw in some fresh bedding if you ever notice your coop smells really bad. And it's important that you keep this balance right because if you don't keep the proper ratio of bedding to poop, then you could potentially get too much bad bacteria in there. And at that point, you could make your chickens sick. Uh, some other things that can go wrong with the deep litter method are bumblefoot. A lot more problems with bumblefoot from chickens walking in their own litter all the time. And that's again, if you don't have the proper ratio, you don't have enough bedding mixed in with it. So you really gotta stay on top of it. Deep litter requires you to really be on top of your game. Typically people that do this deep litter method, they'll clean their coop out once in the spring. They'll clean it out again in the fall going into winter. And maybe one time somewhere in between. It really all depends on how many chickens you have and how fast that litter is piling up. Because obviously as you're adding more and more shavings, more bedding down over the course of the year, you're, you're gonna stack it deeper and deeper. And eventually your coop's gonna fill up to the point where it just needs to be cleaned out. But here's the thing, a lot of times when you go to clean that out, you don't wanna clean and scrape clear down to the floor. You wanna make sure you save some of that base layer so that you can use that to kinda of expedite and kick off the fermentation process again. Uh, it's kinda of like if you ferment your feed, a lot of times you'll scoop your old feed out and you'll save the, the water that you've been fermenting that feed in, add more feed to it, and the fermentation process, it kicks off a whole lot faster that next go around than it did when you were just using fresh clean water. Same thing with deep litter. You're, you're Essentially what you're doing is you're composting. So you wanna save some of that compost and it's gonna help really start that, that process even faster whenever you clean out and go to add fresh bedding back on there. When you remove this stuff, this compost can be great for your garden. It's really rich. It, it, it's great fertilizer, probably the best fertilizer there is. So there's a good plus to deep litter method. Another cool thing about the deep litter method is if you live in a place where it's really cold, that compost is gonna naturally, as it's fermenting, it's gonna put off some heat. And so your coop will run probably about 10, 15 degrees warmer on average maybe in the winter time just from having that deep litter in there. And that can really help you out. The big positives about doing deep litter is you're gonna ultimately spend less time cleaning out your coop throughout the year and you're gonna go through less bedding. So it'll save you a little money there as well. Now, some of the negatives to doing this deep litter method are if you have problems with lice or mites, you gotta clean it all out real good and start from scratch. If you have a chicken that gets sick or maybe you have some kind of illness spread throughout your flock, gotta do a total clean out. You don't want anything left in that bedding that's gonna reinfect any of your other members of the flock. You also have more opportunities for snakes and mice and that sort of stuff to hide under the bedding. You know, you, you got that much bedding piled in your coop, you could easily have a mouse or a couple mice come in and live under that and you wouldn't even know they were in there. And mice can actually nibble on your chicken's toes at nighttime while they're asleep. And so you don't want mice in the coop and naturally you get mice in there. It's only a matter of time till a black snake's gonna come up in there looking for mice and then it's gonna realize there's eggs in there to eat. And you go to pick eggs one day, you got a snake in your nest box. You'll have more aggravations like that when you're doing deep litter method. The other thing is you don't wanna use anything like diatomaceous earth because that kills both the good and the bad bacteria. And while that's a handy tool to have to treat mites and stuff on your birds, every now and then I'll scatter it through my pine shavings just to ensure that there's no problems within the coop. You can't do that with deep litter. It'll just like put the screeching halt on your composting process. That's my new Australorp rooster learning to crow. 
They sound so funny when they're learning. Yeah. Keep practicing, you'll get it. So now you're going, okay, well, why don't you do the deep litter method here on the pretend farm? Well, that's a great question. Here's why I don't mess with the deep litter method. First of all, the pretend farmer, okay, that's enough now. First of all, the pretend farmer is a neat freak. In fact, I've been known to take a shop vac in my coop and even suck the cobwebs and stuff out sometimes when I'm cleaning, just because I like having a constant squeaky clean coop. You can't have that with deep litter. You can't go in your coop and sit down at any given time when you got that much bedding in there full of poop. You're gonna be a, a nasty mess. Especially being a YouTube content creator, it's important for me to be able to get in the coop and interact with my birds. And I generally stay pretty clean doing this. Cleanliness is one reason why I don't do the deep litter method. I just feel like overall everything is cleaner when you don't do deep litter. Secondly, there is the issue that chickens do get sick. Sadly, I lost two chocolate Orpingtons last week. I had one that acted sick for about two or three days. Uh, she ultimately dropped dead in the yard. And then I had another one that wouldn't come up to roost about one or two days after that. She just stayed out in the yard and kind of looked zombified. I had to go ahead and call her because I didn't want her infecting anybody else within the flock. And so, if I was doing deep litter there, I would have had to do a total thorough clean out, deep scrub of the coop. But instead, I was able to just get up and do my regular cleaning the next day. I dispatched the sick birds, got rid of them. There hasn't been any more issues, but it, it, it's always going to happen. You're going to have a chicken every now and then get sick. Or maybe you'll notice one that's got mites on it. These are all situations where if you're deep littering and you find a chicken with mites or something, Chances are there's probably mites in the coop and then you got to shovel out all that deep litter with mites in it and try and clean. And it can just get to be a hassle there. The other thing is the mice and the snakes. You know, we've never had a rodent problem or any kind of bug problems or snake problems. I clean this coop out so regularly, there's not even enough time for anything to get established in there. You know, if you're gonna do deep litter method, I'd encourage you to watch some videos on composting because you're essentially doing the same thing. And there's also some other good YouTube videos on deep litter method where people are explaining how this works probably a lot better than pretend farmer can. <coughs> Unfortunately, I can't speak from experience in this video and say, here's how deep litter worked for me. We've never done it, but pretend farmer has been asked about this question so much that I spent some time this week doing research on how deep litter works and really just kind of reevaluated whether or not we want to do it here. I think we'll keep doing our regular weekly clean outs. It gives me more time to spend with my chickens. It keeps me more involved in what's going on inside the coop. And I just feel like overall, I have a cleaner, healthier flock when I'm cleaning the coop out regularly than chickens that are walking in their own litter all the time. I don't have to worry about keeping things balanced out. I don't have to worry about what if something goes wrong and too much bad bacteria takes over. My chickens start getting bumblefoot. Well, is it because I didn't put enough shavings or bedding in on top of their litter while I was doing deep litter method? I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because my litter is getting changed out regularly. The chickens are always walking in fresh, clean, dry bedding, and I think that's the overall best scenario. If you do the deep litter method at your chicken coop, leave us a comment and let us know how often you throw in fresh bedding and how often you clean your coop out. Also, let us know if there's ever been a time where you've had to do an unplanned clean out due to sickness or bugs, uh, any kind of parasite infestations, whatever. Is pretend farmer not giving the deep litter method a fair chance or am I kind of right in what I'm saying? Leave a comment. I know I'm gonna get a lot of mixed feedback on this one, but I still like hearing what everybody else is doing out there. It's real interesting. Till next time, this is the Pretend Farmer signing out.